Michael here. Today is Saturday, September 4th, 2021. I am in Farmersville, Texas, which is in Collin County. Farmersville is a small town, about 3,301 uh, people as far as the last census. It was uh, first settled in 1849 and it was actually incorporated in 1873. Farmersville is known, at least in agricultural terms, as the onion capital of North Texas. And they got that uh, moniker back in the 1930s. So let's go see what's around here. Come hang out with me. So they really don't have a town square per se, but they have more of a town strip here. With a lot of buildings that look like they're probably from the early 1900s, maybe late 1800s on some of them. No need to ask what the mascot is around here. Being Farmersville, we're in the Farmer Nation. I always like these old hand-painted signs on the side of buildings here. And I'm trying to read what this one says. It's, it's advertising the store itself. That would be a perfect wall to repaint. Right here at the juncture, we have a yarn and you shop. So much yarn. And the post outside are covered in yarn. It looks like they may have rounded the corner of this building. As you can see, the brickwork changing here. I always thought it'd be cool to live upstairs and have a little shop downstairs. But then again, I don't want to be stuck in the same place all the time. There's still plenty of places here that are for lease. So if you want to open up a shop here, this looks like a grand time to do it. This mural here is pretty interesting. It looks like that spray stuff that you would uh, spray on your windows during Christmas time for snow effect. Hey, it looks like they may have just sprayed it all and then scraped out the windows in the town. That's pretty amazing actually. Looks like this particular storefront is being used for storage. You'll see that a lot in small towns. Is that an old ham radio set there? If you know what that is, leave a note in the comments. Every small town's going to have their little Tex-Mex place. This is Jalapeno's Mexican Grill. Apparently it's a really popular place. So, small town, small town pharmacies here. And what's amazing about this pharmacy is that the lady who owns it is still a pharmacist here. She is 80 years old and she's still this town's pharmacist. So this monument here was uh, dedicated by the community of Farmersville on Memorial Day, May 28, 1973. And it's a memory of Audie Murphy. Audie Murphy uh, was the most decorated soldier of World War II. He died in a plane crash in 1971. Audie Murphy did live in a few different places, but he was known to live here and take care of his aunt, I believe, from what I was told by someone here on the street. Uh, in Addison, Texas, there's a home that they call Audie Murphy's home, and it's actually a restaurant, or it was last time I checked it, and uh, they actually have murder mystery dinners there. And one famous event that did happen here concerning Audie Murphy was his homecoming on June 15, 1945. Thousands and thousands of people came out to this area, what they're calling their town square, more of a town strip. And Life Magazine even published that year as their cover story, the big homecoming for Audie Murphy in Farmersville, Texas. Audie Murphy also was a Hollywood star, so if you'll see him in several films. In fact, uh, he did star in a film about his life in World War II. I was just commenting to somebody down the street here, you can always place the post office. I didn't even see the building, but I saw the flagpole. They always had the American flag with the POW MIA flag flying below it. And this is the United States Post Office, Farmersville. 75442. So right over there is the coffee shop. Kind of gave it away with the coffee painted on the pillar there. I'm thinking they sell a little bit more than coffee. There's a 51% sign. And the Farmersville Auto Supply here is still the Auto Supply Store. How novel is that? Yet another yarn store here. I guess a uh, national pastime here is uh, either growing onions 
or crocheting. Here's a local Remax agent. I really like the way this place is set up. They got a little display here. And I guess this was a department store called WT Cook. And you got your whole area here. Obviously not the original door, but... Oh, there you go. That's J Cook, which I guess is related to WT Cook. Men's wear and dry goods. Quite some history here. Very cool. Holy cow, it's been a long time since I've seen a Thomas Kincaid gallery. They even have a Thomas Kincaid on tile here. So this right here is a Chaparral, 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 Chaparral? Chaparral. Chaparral Trail here in Farmersville. And they're quite proud of this trail. And I love seeing these at trails. We showed this in one of the colony trails here where it, uh, you have all your tools for your bike. So you've got to tune up your bike or air up the tires. Um, love that they have these tools here for you to use. So apparently this is part of the Northeast Texas trail system and it looks like a huge trail system. Here we start in Farmersville, all the way up to Paris, all the way over here to Bowie County to New Boston. That is a huge trail system. Because through Collin, Hunt, Fannin, Delta, Lamar, Red River, and Bowie counties. So as a lot of towns around here are have trail systems that were former railroad uh, trails. So this is the Chaparral Rail Trail, which connects to the uh, Trail de Paris, uh, Reno, Prairieland, Blossom. So all the all these trails are following the old railroad tracks. So this is where the railroad ran through, which makes sense because over here is the onion shed. And that onion shed was right next to the railroad tracks there. And on the other side of the street there is actually the um, the rail station from when people use it here. So this is a, this is actually right here is where the railroad went through. Very cool. So this was the original. In fact, you can look at one of the old uh, telephone poles here with the glass insulators on top. Very cool. Well, this is the official start of the trail here at 0.0, .0 miles. And what better way to start it but with a railroad tie? And we are a bit in the country. <laughs> Those are some chickens out there. Love the old timey truck. I guess we're starting to get out of town here. That's the last set of lights. Once we go in the woods here, I don't see any more light poles. Doesn't mean the trail's not lit. There is a sodium vapor light and it's actually on right now. Oh my goodness, a little park bench there. Just kind of listen to the birds. So the Farmersville Times is still in business here. It's not at this location at the moment. Uh, I'm guessing it moved to another building in town, but it's actually the oldest newspaper in Collin County. It started around 1880. Looks like they also take care of the uh, Princeton Herald here as well. So we just had to take a little break. And my sister-in-law highly recommend this Venetia Italian restaurant. It's right off of 78 near 380. Well, there's a first time for everything. It's the first time I've ever had a paper straw. We'll see how long it lasts. Carolyn opted for the pot, not, not the pasta, the lasagna here. I went with the uh, chicken Genevieve. It looks like it's got asparagus, uh, spears, spaghetti, and some mozzarella cheese on it. This dish has a main different interpretations of it. Down a ways from the town square over there, if you go walking near where the onion shed is, 
Future Michael here. I made the mistake saying this was the old uh, railroad passenger station. It's actually an onion shed that they converted, but it is the Heritage Museum. This is the Heritage Museum, and uh, one thing to always be mindful of is some of these buildings are old, so be gentle with them. I just happened to step on that. My foot went right through it, right there. So, y'all be careful with it. They're gonna actually rope it off and uh, and I guess I'm going to set it the example where they may put weight limits on these things. <laughs> Museum is free. They do take donations here, so uh, they're going to find something to rope that off so nobody breaks their ankle there. But I did let them know about it. So, uh, Farmersville, discover a Texas treasure. I love these metal signs. Farmersville Heritage Museum. I recognize what this is. It's an old jail sore for a single cell. Y'all haven't watched my video yet. Check out the video of Granberry. They got a jail system that I would not want to be in, but that door kind of reminds me of that. If you're going to have a museum in Farmersville, you have to have a section detailing the life of Farmersville's favorite son here. This is Audie Murphy, and yes, he was quite a smaller guy here uh, when he joined the Army. And these medals are replicas, but they are representative of uh, the medals that he was, what was awarded during World War II. And just to give you a small listing, feel free to pause that to see the listing there. Julie, you were uh, talking about um, that he still has a lot of family here. So what is the background of Audie Murphy in Farmersville? Audie's oldest sister, Corinne Burns, was married and she and her family lived here in Farmersville. Mm -hmm. In 1940, when Audie's mother got sick, she moved in to Corinne's home in Farmersville with Audie's three youngest siblings. Uh, Audie's mom had her mail addressed to Corinne's home in Farmersville. And so when Audie went into the Army, he decided to put Farmersville because he had family here. Mm -hmm. When Audie got out of the Army, he had Post Office Box 251, where he received mail from James Cagney which took him to Hollywood. Oh, wow. So he had that P.O. box, and it just so happens that I myself have that P.O. box now. Oh, wow. I'm a big fan. <laughs> so do you want to ride her? P.O. box 251, uh, Farmersville, Texas. Wow. That's amazing. Yes. That's amazing. So Nadine is her, his sister? Yes, his, okay. uh, his only living sibling, Nadine, she's 90 years old. Oh, wow. She lives uh, close by in Princeton, Texas. Mm -hmm. Oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah, um, Julie was telling me that Audie, when he joined the military, he would have fainting spells because he was so underweight and so malnourished, half stars. Yes. So he was like you said five four when he joined. Uh, he was five foot five, one hundred and twelve pounds on the day he joined. On oh my! The day he turned seventeen, he enlisted. Right. Uh, when kind he of got out, records there. That's right. Uh, when he got out, he was nineteen. Mm -hmm. um, he had gained weight and grew up. So he was one hundred thirty eight pounds, five foot eight. Wow! When he got out. That's amazing. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. So, okay, quick correction here. I thought this was the old passenger railroad station. It is not. It's actually another onion shed. They used to export a thousand carloads of onions a year here. And the funny thing is, uh, they kind of accidentally got into the onion business because the weather was so bad uh, for a time there that they couldn't grow the cotton and uh, wheat crops that are uh, normally grown around here. So one farmer decided to do onions and it just took off. So everybody switched over to onions and it was able to uh, deal with the weather patterns here. So the uh, North Texas onion capital right here, Farmersville, Texas. There's a Motley crew if I ever seen one. 
There's the mayor and I guess they call them board members of the town. Definitely supporting the facial hair. There are tons of other things in this museum. And I do highly encourage that you visit this museum and uh, contribute if you can. But this dress is interesting. And this is uh, Janice. Janice, what is the story on this newspaper dress? We had a shop girls day here several months ago and every shop in town was offered the opportunity to make a dress out of the product that they sold or made. This is from the Farmersal Times, the newspaper. This is the shop girl's dress. We have some more down here if you would like to come and see. Oh, definitely. This was one of the original pictures from a long time ago. This oh. is another one of the Farmersal Times shop girl's dresses. So they've been doing this for... We, we, we reinstituted it. Oh, you reinstituted it. So that was uh, 1885. Yeah. I do know the Farmersville Times is the oldest paper in yeah. Collin County. Yeah, so. And then this one is from the coffee shop. And these are coffee filters. And this is from 1885. Neither one of these do you want to be outside in a rainstorm. Yeah. <laughs> no, you and this lady right here is again from a long time ago. This is a store, Bubba's Hardware and Furniture, that sold cooking implements, and that's her dress. That's gotta be a heavy dress. <laughs> yeah, she's not walking, and she's holding on to something, so I guess it shows. Yeah. <laughs> Hardware store uh, is where you used to get your rifles. Uh-huh. Very cool. Earlier, we were talking about the Life Magazine cover that detailed the uh, homecoming uh, welcome for Audie Murphy, and this is that cover. This is the actual magazine right here. So here is the old railroad depot and it's since been torn down because of the uh, fear of vandalism, but man, just to be part of the old days. These visitor centers are a gold mine. So if you want to know what's in the area, check them out. So this is the onion shed and uh, they call, it's called the Farmersville Market, but kind of a tongue in cheek there was a farmers and fleas market there. But it is a, a big venue, basically a big covered area where they would keep the onions. And the railroad actually ran right through here. So you'll see the track and the road where the track was became the trail here. But there are plenty of the, uh, vendors from the area, some from even where we're at. We talked to one guy, he was from the colony. He, he's got family out here and they said, well, you gotta, you ought to set up a uh, table here. And sure enough, he comes here every every month to sell his wares. So we'll, we're wrecking items. There's a little bit of everything out here. The downtown shops are open. I like this changing room. It's classic. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. It's getting a bit warm out here, so we're going to call it a day. But until next time, y'all take care. Be safe. Bye.